Hello, everyone. I hope you're as excited today as I am about this session. My name is Ryan Martelli, and I am the Vice President of Sales at Telly Industries. We are the proud sponsor of today's All About You session. Telly is a full-service distributor that provides spas and salons, supplies, furniture, and equipment. I'm thrilled to be able to introduce our master mixologist for today's session, Shell Repair. Shell serves as a food and beverage director at the beautiful Ice Spa member property, the Kentucky Castle. Today, she'll be walking us through recipes for an old fashioned and a spring old fashioned. Shell, I'm going to toss it over to you. Thanks and enjoy. Hi, my name is Shell Rapier and I'm here at the Kentucky Castle. Today, I'd like to teach you how to make one of the most classic cocktails in the cocktail world. It's the old fashioned. I'm gonna start you off with the basic one first, and then after we go through this one, we're gonna make one that's a little more fun. It's gonna be a variant on it. So the first thing that I need to teach you is going to be the BSB. So BSB for old fashioned is base spirit, simple syrup, and bitters. So the first thing we need in our glass is gonna be our base spirit. Our base spirit for the first old fashioned will be bourbon. I'm gonna be using Woodford Reserve. I think it's a very nice bourbon. It's a rye bourbon. So the mash bill is corn, rye, and malted barley. They say that there's over 200 aromas and flavors that can come out of Woodford. So there's a lot to play around with this for a cocktail. Now in our glass, we're going to be doing two ounces. So I got two ounces of Woodford Reserve going in my glass. And I encourage you to try it as is. Because when you're talking about cocktail making and like the history behind cocktails, a lot of the times, like if this was so good in the glass, there would be no reason to alter it any further. But the reason why the old fashioned was created is because the whiskey that they were making back at that time was either probably made at home or not very good. And a better way to make a, a good drink is going to be add more sugar and flavor to it. So that's, that's kind of the history behind this cocktail. But let's try our base spirit, our Woodford Reserve as is. It's definitely pretty hot. Um, this is the, the first whiskey that I've had this evening. So it burns a little bit in the back of the throat, but the more that I sip this, the more flavors I'm going to be getting out of it. I do get some smoke, a little bit of oak, um, and maybe like some light citrus in there too, especially on the nose. So I think this is going to play really well for our old fashioned. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to be needing is going to be simple syrup. Simple syrup is a simple ratio of one part sugar to one part water. Um, at this bar, we make a lot of old fashioned, so we batch our simple syrup in cheater bottles. Um, it makes things go a little faster behind the bar. And then for our ratio to bourbon, it's going to be two to one. So my two ounces of bourbon is going to have one ounce of simple syrup. And just give this a quick stir and try it as is. Sweeter, um, a lot more palatable. I could drink this cocktail as is right now, um, and I only have bourbon and sugar water in here, but this is the basis to our old fashioned. Um, we can make this a little bit better though, and the way that we make it better will be the last ingredient to our cocktail, and that's gonna be bitters. Bitters were created as a shelf stable way to keep aromatics and flavors on your shelf all year long. They were also used for medicinal methods. Um, we don't really use them for that today. I guess the closest thing you could get to it would be like an essential oil or a tincture, but that's basically what this is. So the Angostura or Angostoria, however you like to pronounce this, is basically baking spices and a bitter orange. So if you're daring enough, you can smell it. And that's what I get. I get like a nice cardamom and like a bitter orange zest. So we're gonna add that to our cocktail. Two dashes will be fine, right? Shaking it like a salt shaker. And now try it as is. Good. We got a good accent there. We took that bourbon that was like a little bit high heat, high alcohol, but still a lot of flavor. We toned that down with a little bit of sweetness here. And now we've accented all those flavors in that sweetness with a little bit of an accent of our bitters. This is a perfect cocktail as is, but we're still not quite done. We're going to add some ice. I'm going to be using this KSI cube here. I've got the Kentucky Limestone Ice Cube. This is made with limestone water and they actually shoot electricity through the water as it's freezing so that way it gets no bubbles in it. And they freeze it into a giant four by two foot block and then they shave it down with chainsaws to get it to the cube that you see before you. I'm gonna add a little bit of a garnish here. Um, the one thing that I did not do for this old fashioned, which is probably pretty popular, especially out of Kentucky, 
um, is muddle the fruit. Um, and I really don't like to do that. As soon as you incorporate any kind of juice into this cocktail, to me, that makes it a bourbon punch. And bourbon punches are delicious, but I don't think that they're old fashioned because BSB stands for base spirit, simple syrup, and bitters. And by mashing the cherry and the orange, I'm adding both cherry and citrus juices. It does make a nice snack on top. And as you stir it, if you like go around the rim, you can add a little flavor and smell to it. So this is our standard old fashioned. And it's very good. I apologize for the screaming. Uh, we are running restaurant service, but I wanted to film this at the bar. So thank you for your patience. Uh, the next one I'm gonna do is gonna be a variant on the old fashioned. I'm gonna be using the same standard recipe, but I'm gonna be changing all three of those three basic ingredients. The first one that I'm gonna be changing is the base spirit. So I went from bourbon to gin. This is a modern gin. It's out of High Clare Castle which is what we like to call our sister castle. It is the same castle that Downton Abbey was filmed at. And then all of the herbs that are infused into this gin are grown on property. So that's pretty cool. Uh, same premise. We got two ounces of gin into our glass and we're gonna take it the same way that we did our first cocktail. So try it as is. Definitely heavy lemon on the, the smell taste is it's it's almost creamy there's oats in this so it adds an extra creaminess to like the finish and the flavor but not super heavy on juniper which i really like about the gin i know that juniper is one of the main ingredients in gin and it must be there but i think this one does it in a much more balanced way than some of the more like london dry gins that you get out there for our second ingredient instead of using simple syrup i'm going to be using an earl gray lavender honey syrup and I'm gonna do that basically what you see in front of you. In the bottom of this mug, I have some honey. In the top of this strainer, I've got some Earl Grey Lavender Tea. It's from Elmwood N Teas. They are one of the most premium imported teas that I can get here at the bar. So I'm very excited about this. And I'm just gonna do just a pour over seep on this. So I've got some hot water for my espresso machine behind me. I'm gonna pour it slowly over these until I get about to one to one ratio, which is pretty close right there. So it's gonna be a lightly infused syrup, but it's gonna be enough to enhance the flavor. And just a quick stir, we'll get the honey and that Earl Grey lavender tea infused. All right, and then same thing again. We did two ounces of our gin to one ounce of our now Earl Grey lavender honey syrup right here. It smells really good. I wish you could smell it with the camera. So I'm gonna put that in. Beautiful color too. So let's try it as is. Really good. There's a little bit of bitter tannicness from the Earl Grey tea, but as soon as you start to taste that bitter tannins, you're immediately hit with like that sweet honey and the, the citrus and the lavender is what you're left with in the end but we're still not done, we're still not done. So we've got our gin, we've got our Earl Grey lavender honey syrup that we've got on here, and then we're gonna use a lemon bitter. So our Angostura bitters that we used first was an alcohol-based bitter. This is a vegetable glycerin-based bitter. So it's the same infusion process, but this has non-alcohol and this one has alcohol. Fee Brothers is one of my favorite lines of bitters, and this one is definitely one of my favorite ones in their line. So we're gonna do two dashes, same as before. All right, and then we try it. Really just brightened it up a lot. It added more of the citrus on the front end and more citrus mid palette, but I'm still left with that nice lavender floral on the end. So I'm, I'm really liking where we went with this cocktail. But the last thing we need to do is a little bit of ice here and I'm gonna do the KSI again, just cause it's a very high quality ice, quick stir. Well, there's a couple things we could do as garnish here. If I had a second to run out to the garden, I'd get like a really nice edible purple flower. But what I definitely have under the bar is going to be a lemon twist. And I'll show you a neat little trick to do with your bar spoon to get the perfect twist. So if you take your bar spoon and you wrap this twist around it, you're going to get that perfect pigtail. And you kind of pinch it and squeeze it and it's going to keep its shape. 
And then after you have your twist, you'll pull it off the end of the bar spoon, go around the glass, and then either set it on it or drop it in, whichever you prefer. Adds a nice aromatic. It really brings up more of that lemon bright citrus. So we went from a very dark classic cocktail right here to a very light bright cocktail. And we kept the same recipe, we just changed the ingredients. So I hope I taught you a little bit of something today and I hope I encouraged you to play around with some fun things and come see us at the castle and cheers.